takes tonight in San Francisco, where Jared Greenberg has been covering the series. Uh, Jared, one of the many intriguing aspects of the Morant story is the lack of clarity about his injury, which the Grizzlies have listed simply as right knee soreness. What do we really know about his condition? It really is the big mystery right now. The Grizzlies still seem to be more wrapped up in how he got injured. They are still accusatory of Jordan Poole for, quote unquote, yanking the knee of Ja Morant, even though the league office reviewed the play, determined it was a normal basketball play in their judgment, and will not be taking any action on Jordan Poole for that play. But yeah, Matt, as you said, really vague. We know Ja Morant went and got an MRI. We have no clue from the Grizzlies what exactly was determined or revealed in that MRI. We also don't know if it's any, if it's more than just right knee soreness, if it's any sort of ligament or tendon damage, we have no idea. What we do know, though, is that there is clear video evidence throughout the course of the game prior to the contact with Jordan Poole that John ja Moran showed signs of limping. We also know that throughout the course of this season, in two different occasions, John ja Morant missed time due to knee injuries. Mm -hmm. One set of games for his left knee, one set of games for his right knee late in the season, up until the last game of the regular season, which he was able to return from. We have seen him visibly limping. We had him walking out of the arena the other night after game three limping, and we saw him coming into the arena today for shoot-around with a visible limp, but also did not participate in shoot around. He's listed Matt as doubtful. We have no more information than that. It is truly a mystery. Hmm, curious. Well, three games in, there's been a controversial physical incident in each game so far. Draymond Green hmm. in game one, Dylan Brooks, who returns from his suspension tonight. That was back in game two. And depending upon your point of view, Jordan Poole in game three, uh, two of those obviously led to penalties. And a lot of talk about the code. Where do we stand in terms of the rhetoric and hard feelings ahead of tip tonight? Well, that, that continues to come out of the Memphis side of things. And, and, and this is not an accusatory term. It's just we ask Memphis about it. They tend to respond. Jaron Jackson Jr. after game three said, I guess we're going to be talking about breaking the code the entire series. When Golden State is asked about it, they don't speak on it. They think that what has happened from their standpoint is normal basketball plays. Even, even the Draymond Green incident in game one, which got him ejected, they defend that to be right, wrong, or indifferent to be a basketball play. But as you mentioned, Dylan Brooks coming back tonight. He was asked, he spoke today at shoot-around for the first time since the incident that got him thrown out of game two. And he said, if I had to do it over again, I would. However, he does not think it was dirty. He doesn't understand what Steve Kerr is talking about when referring to breaking the code. And he has not yet reached out to Gary Payton Jr., Gary Payton II, who fractured his elbow as a result of the contact with Brooks. And I cannot wait for this crowd tonight. It is going to be intense here at Chase Center as Dylan Brooks gets introduced to this very, very vivacious road crowd. Oh, they'll, they'll love him there tonight, I'm sure. Warriors have made Jonathan Kaminga the youngest playoff starter in league history in Game 3. How likely... Quickly, if you can, uh, is Steve Kerr to go back to him tonight? You know, that is also a mystery here. The Warriors keep on changing things. It's like more things change. The more they stay the same with Golden State is you don't know who is going to be in or out. It would not surprise me if we see Otto Porter Jr. get in the starting lineup with how well he played in the first half. But I also think they like the athleticism and length that Jonathan Kuminga brings them. They just want him to rein in some of those turnovers, some of those costly mistakes he had in game one, when, when game three, when he had two turnovers in that first quarter. If he can control those turnovers, they love what they're getting out of Kaminga, but it also would not surprise me if we see Porter make the 34th different starting lineup 